Tech Nerd Squad. You seem to quite enjoy the team up between Ben and I where we got to talk about some of our favorite weird Marvel what if villains and so I am back with some more for you. This is Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Today we'll be counting down the Top 10 Weirdest Marvel What If Villains Part 2. You already got to hear about some pretty fantastically ridiculous villains on Part 1 so get ready for this gloriously weird group. Let's jump into it. Number 10, Dr. Murrow. The interesting thing too about Dr. Murrow is that some spelling for this character is like Dr. Morrow, but if you actually look at the comic itself, it's Murrow with a U, so I believe it's Murrow with a U, but if you say Morrow and I say Murrow, that's also fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna come for you. Dr. Murrow appears in the What If issue number 11 from the 1997 series. Here we answer the question, what if the Marvel bullpen had been transformed into the Fantastic Four? Being from a different time period, there are definitely some extremely, uh, sexist tones in this issue. A lot of it aimed sadly at fabulous Flo Steinberg who stands in for Invisible Woman. But another ridiculous aspect of this issue aside from that more serious one are some of the villains that we see the bullpen version of the FF face off against. Like their first villain, Dr. Murrow. Dr. Murrow's island was the one that they planned on visiting before they were delivered some fan mail. Upon opening it up they found a mysterious radio like device which transformed them into the Fantastic Four, granting them powers after they were exposed to cosmic rays that the device emitted. Turns out that this was all part of a scroll plot, which we find out later in the issue, and that Dr. Murrow was also a victim of a similar device. Oh no. But even with that, why did he attack them when they got to his island? Why is he a villain in all this? Why is he one of the first villains we run into? Did the transformation like make him, I don't know, just really mad or something? Or violent? The reality is they probably just wanted to start the issue off with a good fight and a bit of mystery, but still, Murrow ends up being a pretty bizarre villain because of this because there's things that just aren't explained here. Oh well, I, I'm willing to come along for this strange ride in any what if. Number nine, disappointed Loki. In the what if story, what if the Hulk had the brain of Bruce Banner, we get to see what would happen if the Hulk had kept Banner's wits and then ran into Loki's illusion, you know, with the train tracks and such. Turns out this version of the Hulk was too smart to fall for Loki's trap. Seeing the TNT on the train tracks, but believing it to be an illusion meant that he would never be put onto a collision course with the Avengers and therefore would never join that team. Instead, Loki ends up disappointed, and Banner goes on to fight against Galactus, joining with Professor X and Reed Richards to create the new and extremely powerful uni being of X Man. Poor Loki, though, he's like, but I set this trap in. All right. <laughs> I guess not all traps are winners. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you wanna show some support for us on other platforms, head on over to Facebook, give us a like, give us a follow, it does help us out, and we're gonna have lots of exciting new content coming for you over there. <gasps> Exciting. Number eight, fake Captain America. Both weird and great in a lot of ways. Fake Captain America was William Burnside. Now, while William Burnside does exist in the 616 universe, where he was a well meaning Captain America imposter driven mad by improper use of the super soldier serum, in the what if reality of Earth 84444, he ended up becoming obsessed with communists, paranoid that they could be lurking around every corner, which is kind of what happened in the main continuity, but in this one, he's less like, oh no, it's just the super soldier serum and more like he made some conscious choices here. Modeling America into less of a democracy under the name of Captain America, Burnside would be beaten back by the real Captain America, who in this story doesn't resurface until 1984, which means that Burnside has a lot of time to basically do harm to the American image and the influence of the nation's people. This warning story and the speech the real Cap gives at the end are both still pretty relevant today, which is why this is like a great issue, but also why it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird how there's a lot of stuff in this that I feel like is still relevant, even though it's from 1984. Do we ever do new things or does history just cycle in like some vicious loop? Probably that. Number seven, Colonel Bruce Banner. What if Bruce Banner was actually the monster and Hulk was just purely the good guy? Well, that is the question we dive into in issue 91 of the 1989 series. Here, Bruce Banner mistreats his wife, Betty Ross, who eventually becomes, of course, Betty Banner. Bruce is cruel and unkind, but after he is involved, in a gamma radiation explosion, another half of him emerges, a glowing green light-like figure who is gentle and kind and we know as Starman basically this world's Hulk, and he was actually terrified of Bruce himself. Not only is this villain pretty interesting, unique, and strange, but the story is also like 
epically sad. Despite Betty reaching out for help to both her father and others around her, it seems that no one actually really believes Betty when it comes to the fact that like Bruce mistreats her. In the end, she is confined to a mental institution as she's believed to have gone insane. But at least there she appears to be safe from Bruce and his cruelty, so it's like a sad but I guess sort of happy ending. It's bittersweet is what it is. Ugh. Number 6, Mr. Fantastic. So, Mr. Fantastic in this story is still Reed Richards, but He's also Doctor Doom. Let me explain. In issue number 6 of the 1997 What If series, we get to explore an alternate world where the Fantastic Four were granted different powers. These powers seem to have been inspired more by their personality traits. As such, Reed Richards becomes a big brain. Literally, he's just a brain. Instead of him staying as a big disembodied brain though, with mental or psionic capacities, if you will, he ends up being convinced by Doctor Doom to go with him so that Doom might help him by using his knowledge of robotics to build him a humanoid body. You know that when Doom is like, please, l let me help you, Reed Richards, that's not what's about to happen. In reality, Doom's plan is to use Reed's powerful brain form to power his time travel machine. The Fantastic Four come to save Reed and a battle ensues, eventually resulting in a massive explosion when Doom attempts to activate his machine. Just as the explosion goes off though, Reed manages to use his mental brain powers to move his mind into Doom's body. As a result, Doom, which I assume moves into Reed's brain form, ends up dead, and Reed lives on, but within the scarred body of Dr. Doom. So now it just looks like Doom is leading the FF. Pretty cool, but also pretty weird. Number 5, Space Admiral Von Strucker. In the What If story from issue number 14 of the 1977 series, we answer the question, what if Sergeant Fury had fought World War II in outer space? Turns out that events would be... As expected, pretty weird. The whole premise is that on this alternate Earth, humans got to space a lot sooner and ended up being pulled into a conflict where they fought against the Baytans. Strucker himself was an admiral. Strucker would end up on the side of humanity, but would ultimately betray humankind and Earth to ally himself with the Baytans. He saw an opportunity for Germany, who he was more loyal to than, you know, just Earth in general. Even though, you know, Germany's part of Earth, so I feel like maybe an interesting choice. On his part. Basically, he believed that if the Baytans took over as their allies, Germany would be in a better place than they were now, so he decided to betray his fellow space soldiers. Which actually I guess kind of does make sense considering everything that happened after World War One. Space wars are always fun and weird though, and this story and its antagonists are of course no exception. Number 4, Hypnofish. The Hypnofish that appears in What If issue number 1 from the 1977 series is actually a character that has appeared in the main continuity. A character? A type of fish, <laughs> whether there is only a single hypnofish or more than one. This is a character who has only made a few appearances in even the main continuity since their first 616 appearance in 1963 in Fantastic Four issue number 14. But they also appear as Namor the Submariner's villainous ally in the first What If issue where we answer the question, what if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four? The end result is that Namor successfully uses his hypnofish friend to kidnap Sue Storm, but instead of being rescued as she was in issue number 14 of FF, she ends up staying with Namor and uh, ultimately becoming his queen. All because Spider-Man is on the team, which leaves her kind of feeling like isolated from them. In the end, his hypnofish and mentofish plot is successful, and Sue chooses to remain with Namor. Also, yes, there are also mentofish. That's a thing too. An even more rare thing than hypnofish, I believe. Number three, Loki, Prince of Jotunheim. Another one of my favorite episodes from Marvel's and Disney Plus's What If series for just how lighthearted and adorable it was, was one that asked the question, what if Thor were an only child? The answer was that Thor would basically be kind of a well-loved brat who was obsessed with partying as opposed to heroics. Not only did we get party Thor in this episode, though, we also got friendly frost giant Loki, who is also known of course as the Prince of Jotunheim. Instead of Loki being adopted by Odin and growing up to be the villain we normally know him as, the sort of jealous and vengeful brother of Thor, he becomes Thor's best friend and ally who also seems to enjoy a good party. And I gotta say, I kinda love it. <laughs> super weird and super great. Number 2, Galactus. Galactus is a pretty complex character. Sometimes he's a villain, at times he's been a hero, currently I'm pretty sure in the main continuity he's dead and his corpse is maybe being used as part of Thor's 
throne room. But either way, when it comes down to it, despite being a cosmic inevitability, Galactus often threatens entire worlds with his hunger, which, you know, it feels pretty villainous. And yet even he can end up with a happy ending where he gets to enjoy the simple life. All it takes is for Thanos to use the Infinity Gauntlet to wipe his mind and send him to Earth to live as a human. Hey, it's so easy. In this story, this attempt to neutralize Galactus results in him being recognized, despite his amnesia, as Elvis. This is because Galen in his human form happens to sound and look just like Elvis, coincidentally. When Adam Warlock finds him after defeating Thanos and offers to return Galactus to his prior form and power, he actually refuses and decides to live out his days on Earth with his new partner Gertrude and her son, basically filling in as the planet's, uh, I guess, Elvis replacement following the mysterious death of the real Elvis. Which, I mean, fair enough. I mean, if I came to Earth and then people thought I was Elvis, I'd probably be like, you know what? I think I'm good. I'll just chill here. This is a pretty good life. Number one, Juggernaut. In this bizarre what if issue, we ask the question, what if Professor X of the X-Men had become the Juggernaut? Which is a strange question and is also a great question. Obviously, instead of his brother, Kane Marco obviously, who is normally the juggernaut. This story takes place in the pages of issue 13 of the 1989 What If series. Here we see that Professor X is trapped under the rubble of the caved-in tomb where Sidorak's gem awaited an avatar. So Charles becomes the avatar of Sidorak and not only gains great physical power, but has his psychic mutant power basically increased as well. Because he was not around to form the X-Men, the Fantastic Four fight against Magneto in their place, which causes anti-mutant hysteria as a result. In response, when Juggernaut surfaces, he creates his own team of mutants to enforce anti-human laws in response, Woo! becoming a powerful villain as opposed to friend and ally of humankind. Would have gone a lot differently. Who are some of your favorite Marvel What If villains? Are there any weird and wonderful What If villains you'd like to see appear in the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse? What are your favorite What If stories? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.